Can we please form a squad? Hey guys, it is Tristan with Nerdette's Newsstand, and I want to talk a little bit about storytelling in a weird way. I normally, on any given week, I read whatever is new starting right on Tuesday, and then if I get them done by the end of the week, I'll start a new reading project or go back and read one of my favorites or something simple like that. So this week, I got done yesterday. And I went back and I started rereading Gotham City Sirens. I have fond memories of it. I absolutely love the stories. I love the characters. I love the growth and development. And I went back and read it. And I was shocked at the difference because I had been used to all week reading newer books. And really, all day I looked for a video and I wanted to talk about something that I actually noticed as compared to some sort of news going on. And it's a huge, dramatic change. And not only the way characters are written. Now, this came out in 2009, so we're talking 12 years, right? So, not only the way the characters are written, the way it's drawn, of course, one of my normal complaints when it comes to current books, and also the way that development happens or interchanging of different storylines or different characters within the first three issues of Gotham City Sirens. And I'm, we're going to take a look at it here in a minute. You saw simple things like a damsel in distress, right? You saw character growth. You saw redemption through the form of Riddler. You saw that whole femme fatale with the girls ganging up on, you know, together and then kind of on, you know, Catwoman in, in issue two, I believe. And then you saw that betrayal. Then you saw cameos made by Bat characters. And mind you, I guess I should have prefaced it this. This was pre-New 52, right? There's 26 issues of it all together. It is following the battle for the cow in the heart of Hush, where Selena had her heart ripped out, right? by Hush, and Jason kind of pushed her into a car. He was like this new heavily armored Batman, and then they got a magical elixir from Zatanna, and Bruce Wayne is apparently dead after Final Crisis, right? So that is kind of prefacing this whole story. So you see all of this. You see the cameos by who they think is Batman, and it's actually Dick, but even so... You see, you know, names mentioned, names dropped like Power Girl or Zatanna, like I talked about her giving the elixir. You see um, mystery. You see trauma through Harley Quinn because she's still in that phase where she's going back and forth from, you know, Poison Ivy-ish kind of to the Joker. You see that abuse struggle, that constant Stockholm Syndrome struggle. I'm talking about the first three issues here. I'm not talking about the entire 26 issue run. I'm talking about the first three issues. You see expanded powers from the likes we haven't seen of Poison Ivy in a very, very long time. All within, what, 60, 70 pages? Right now, you pick up any normal book you can pick up say Teen Titans Academy 1, 2, and 3, comparing, you know, numbers to numbers. You're not going to see that. You're not going to see that depth of writing. And it's not that there's more exposition. It's not that there's more dialogue. It's the way that the storytelling is done compared to what it is done now. Now, of course, there is a lot, and I'll show you a little bit. It's a little bit more interesting. But, of course, there is a lot of differences, right? 12 years makes for a change in fan service or the angles that these, you know, Gilliam March does the art and it's fantastic. His art is still fantastic. He's on Joker right now doing that and it's, it's haunting and it's beautiful. It's amazing. But he has changed in a way, the way he does his female characters. We see that with, I believe her name is Cress in that and Barbara. So he, their angles are different. Not that that's a bad thing. It's just I'm pointing out the differences that, you know, we don't have any bad girl comics right now. None. Not unless you go over to maybe Vampirella, kind of maybe Red Sonia, something like that. Uh, Deja, maybe a little bit, but you, you can't go to DC and get a 
typical bad girl comic. Because as many times as I've complained about it, the one that we do have is Harley Quinn, which is up to issue, uh, I believe, four with Solomon Grundy. And it was a good issue. Stephanie Phillips has a solid start to a good run. But the art is terrible. And it makes people turn away. Now they did change it up. I did see in solicitations. So I'm hoping that it sticks that way. But that bad girl edge is gone when you put in garbage comics, right? And they don't use some of the typical tropes you were seen before. You know, the, uh, <laughs> I don't know what other way to say it than maybe the cleavage or the uh, bound and gag, something that was frequently used when, you know, uh, Harley or Ivy at one point kind of um, takes Harley and gags her with her plans, right? We see that on a normal, on a normal thing. Now, I don't know why I don't know what the change is if it's the lack of talent now this is a huge name this is Paul Denny he has a absolute love for Miss Harley Quinn she he created her he wrote most of her origin most of what she you know came up into the last few years till probably <laughs> new 52 but of course he's going to do her well but we even see the growth here where she you know her heart's still not good she's still not doing well she's not and they put that in there, and it's okay for Selena to fail, and that's pretty amazing in itself, but the fact that they put it in here and go along and have that storyline, and, and as you continue, I want to show you something in three that I haven't seen in a very long time, and I didn't even realize that something like this was gone, and that is uh, in this story right now, Thomas Elliott is, um, I don't want to read for, is Hush. And um, he's be going through and trying to be, he is Hush, of course he's Hush. He's going through and pretending to be Bruce, right? So during this time, there's these um different Riddlers because the Riddler has become good. He's become an anti-hero. And the Riddler has become kind of looking in the way of uh, wanting to be more of a personal investigator, using that mind for good, but still, you know, benefiting from it. And, and I can respect that. But there is these other Riddlers, fake Riddlers that are going around. And he is um having to check up because he figured out who it was. And this is something very simple that we don't see now anymore. He's going through here and she's like, oh my God, is someone there? And he's like, um, Ed Nigma, Edmund Nigma, oh my gosh. And you're impressive. From every conceivable angle. Very simple of a line, right? There's not much to it. He is just giving her a compliment. But that doesn't happen anymore. That's the bad thing about this. Is you don't see a compliment to a woman. Because that is simply unacceptable. And I don't understand where that kind of went, right? And and I and even... Gilliam March still draws. And like I said, that has changed all in itself. This is a damsel in distress, but my God, you cannot have that anymore. I don't know why. I don't know what changed. And I don't know if we'll ever actually get back to that way. But it is kind of ironic to look at this and realize that just a few years ago, this was okay. How did, um, see, in here, just another shot of something you never see nowadays. How did Overton's window shift so much that we can't even have simple, pretty women? I don't know. I know I complain about that a lot. I know I do. But it's not just the women in this situation. It's a, it's a decent sized part of it. But it's the, the different layering of storytelling. It's the deepness. It's the way that they look at each one of the characters, whether they're an anti villain or they are, you know, a, a straight up villain. It's the way that Ivy and Catwoman interact. It's the way that we see a Catwoman make, um, kind of an amends at one point with Talia so they can, you know, make sure that nobody finds out who Batman actually is. And we see all of these different tropes within a few simple pages. 
not just fan service, not just pigtails or being bound and gagged. I'm talking about real character development. I'm talking about real storytelling. And I'm not sure it's really a shame because I look at stuff nowadays. And don't get me wrong, I do think a lot from what we see right now at DC is good. But it's not great. Because this, going back, I'm realizing how much better it used to be. How much better we used to have. And even, how, when's the last time we've seen Harley not dressed up like Harley Quinn? Why don't we see simple little changes like that anymore? I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm thinking too much into it. Maybe I like the characters too much or I'm too biased. But the way storytelling has changed in the past 10 years has went significantly downhill. Like, I'm not saying you can't like it because I do like it. I'm not saying it's objectively bad. I'm saying it went, the quality has really, really slid, not only in the art, in the storytelling, in the writing, in the way we look at interactions between characters. And it's funny because... I don't know that we will get there. We will get back to that because of the way that um, politics is so infused into everything. And we're getting, you know, identity politics into the basics of, of storytelling. It's um, There's a video, if you're interested. Last night, Perch did a video, uh, Comics by Perch, did a video about this whole Warren Ellis situation. I've talked about this a couple times now, but... Heidi McDonald, the one I really ragged on in my video because of how just absolutely terrible this person is, in 2009 was saying, hey, this is okay. These girls, they're exhibitionist. But now if you're exhibitionist, you're what? I I don't know. It's very weird to me. And it's very weird to see. And it's I, I, I guess I pose the question to you at this point. Something classic like Gotham City Sirens. Is there a chance of that coming back? If something similar coming back, is there a chance to get good quality storytelling along matched with good quality art within our books anymore? Or do you think that that has kind of passed? So let me know, of course, what you guys think. I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye. <laughs>